Morning guys, Mike here, K1NGZ. I'm at Padre Island National Seashore, which is K0690. And today, I'm gonna activate this part, hopefully, because I haven't activated yet, but I'm gonna do it with my kite antenna. And I've just recently put this together and, and I've used it several times now, and I'm feeling really good about uh, how I set it up and everything. And I posted some pictures on Twitter and I just got lots and lots of questions also over on uh, on Facebook on the parks on the air um, page and so I thought I'd shoot a video of it just to kind of show you guys how I use this thing because it uh, it works really good so um, I'm gonna kind of show you guys the setup first because the setup is probably the most important thing and it'll answer a lot of your questions that you might have about this so let's get started one thing I want to discuss before we even get started here is I didn't invent this, that's for sure. Um, in fact, the first transatlantic uh, QSO was made by Marconi and he was using a kite. So, to give you some history, kites have been around for a bit for uh, transmitters. They were used in military um, and used for ham radio, obviously. But uh, they seem to have fallen by the wayside here. Um, I, I don't see it very often, but I'll tell you what, I'm running a NFED half wave. Uh, that's uh, you know multi multi band to 40 meters and this thing is so wonderful the signal reports I give to people are so clean and beautiful I mean you just you, there's not a lot of static it's just a whole lot of you know beep 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 because I'm running a CW right and uh, but it, it's just wonderful and then when you make contacts across an ocean with six watts I mean you can't argue with these numbers so uh, let's uh, let's get this thing set up the first thing I do when I set up is I drive my stake in. I put it, I feel where the wind's coming from. The wind's coming from this way. So I drive a stake in that angles this way, as you can see here. That way when the kite's pulling on it, it doesn't pull it up out of the ground and take off with my uh, kite. <coughs> um, I'm using a cement forms uh, stake. That's what I had. And uh, the guy at the kite shop, I actually bought it from the guy at the kite shop. So that's why I'm using it and that way it's a nice strong thing i pounded it into the ground with a log that was here and uh and that's what i'm going to tie to so now i'm going to run my line out the line i'm using is 250 pound test kite line it's pretty thick and uh what i do is i'm going to walk out there i would like to say a prescribed distance but i haven't really measured it but i kind of know how long my nfed half wave is so i'm going to go out past that about 50 feet because I'm gonna hang my antenna off the kite line itself, not use the kite line as the antenna. That's a bad idea. So I'm gonna walk out there, I'm gonna stretch it all the way back over here, and then we're gonna do some stuff at this end. Okay, I just finished walking all the way out there, probably about 100, 125 feet or so, maybe, maybe 150 feet. And I strung my wire out, my line out, starting way over there. So now, we're gonna bring it down here. So here is my pole, and I'm gonna take it, and you wanna go so it comes underneath like that. And then I'm gonna do it again. Like that. Like that. Like that. Like that. One more time for good luck. I got six of them on there, okay? And then I push it down low, so it's down here. That prevents it from uh, coming undone. And, and it, when you get it, when you're done, you can just slide this off like this. Ta-da! Really nice. So that's why I do it like that. Boom. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my... Uh, and fit half wave out all the way out there and start unraveling this thing and then when I get get it all unraveled I'm gonna bring this part kind of close to me here where I'll attach my antenna uh, feed line okay so that way I can kind of bring it to where I want this to be this piece the lower part and then I'll go back out the other end we'll tie it on and I'll show you how I do that okay so I stretched my end fed half wave back to here get out of the sun and then I actually use this small carabiner right here and I clipped it right onto the line because this is gonna slide up and down the line as it needs to in the wind 
now we're gonna go to the other end over here and let's tie this thing to the uh, to the kite line an interesting way to do it it's the best way this is the best way to do it period and I learned this from the guy at the kite shop at this end of my wire for my NFED half wave I have a small carabiner on here I'm gonna create on this wire here what's known as a, a lark's head knot lark something or other I'll, I'll write it right here uh, I think it's the lark's head knot so you take it like this you fold it in and you create two loops like that and bring them back to back just like that right there and then you take your carabiner here put it through that and see what it does right here now this will stay right here this is what's supporting the antenna okay not the wire itself just this and then the wire will dangle and this will be no different than like running it over a tree or something now just recently I upgraded this wire right here I just want to take a second to talk about this at first I took some suggestions from people and they were buying this uh, silicone wire and it had a silicone uh, shield on it and honestly I didn't like it I mean I really really didn't like it for a few reasons one uh, I think its sole purpose in life was to one break and two get dirty like it would get sand on it and it just wouldn't come off it was sticky so if you threw it up over a tree and started pulling it through a tree you could potentially break the shielding and when I'd run it through this right here you know as a, a strain relief what would happen is uh, the wire would just break and pull right out of this stuff and the, sh and the shield would break this is the DX engineering uh, stealth wire stealth antenna wire 26 gauge far far superior to that other stuff it's a little bit stiffer than the other stuff but the shielding does play a part in the strength of it as well it's just a it, it's about I don't know less than half the diameter of that uh, silicone stuff so for a kite flying it doesn't uh, do a lot to uh, uh, get into the wind I guess so anyway let's uh, get the kite set up and put this thing up one more thing to do before we put the kite up feed line RG 316 right here and it's 25 feet of it I don't like using that kind of length of this wire because it's just so uh, uh, lossy but I use it and I love I learned from Thomas Witherspoon how to wrap it up in a figure eight just throw it out there when I open it because untangles perfectly all right I'm gonna stick it on here I just want to note if you're at the beach for any length of time and you leave any of these things out overnight they're gonna rust and that's what's happened I have a lot of corrosion on this and I'm gonna wait until I get back to Denver to fix it but uh, it uh, it really does a number on your equipment out here at the beach man I already lost my JPC 12 to this weather all right let's get this and kite up in the air This is the antenna I'm using. This is the Power Sled 24 by Premier Kites. The 24 denotes the number of square footage of uh, fabric on this thing. And uh, I can't think of a better kite than this. Uh, when I was talking to the guy, I went to a kite store and this guy just knew everything about kites, as you would imagine. And, uh, and when I told him about what I wanted, he suggested this kite also to be transparent, one of my neighbors here at the campground was flying. He was talking about it. He went out and flew the kite and was having a great time with it. And he'd got the, the Power Sled 15, which is a little bit smaller than this one. And they were out of that one. But I'm glad I got the bigger one because it works in much less wind. Um, he was flying his. It was a really windy day, if I remember correctly. It was a horribly windy day. And uh, yeah, it worked fine. But when you get into winds that are, you know, 10 to 12 miles an hour you want a little more fabric in the sky and that's why I got this kite here this thing is super duper stable when I went to the kite shop and asked the guy I said I told him I didn't tell him about the other guy I just told him this is what I want to do and he said he walked right over to this kite these are lifting kites power sled and it goes up it's, it just stays in one place it follows the wind for sure but it never dips or dives or acts strange it just stays in one place and it gets really almost straight up and down it's a really good kite all right this is kind of the bread and butter of hooking up the uh, kite line we're gonna use that lark's head knot again but this kite here this is the drogue for the kite the whole kite fits inside the drogue so what I do when I put the kite away 
is I kind of leave the tail of the end of this thing out here. So here's the tail, or the, the, the uh, tail of the, the bridle, they call it. And I'm gonna do a lark's head knot on this too. Do the same thing, bring it over, bring them together like that. And I got that little loop right there, just like that. And you put the, you put the end of the bridle, the knot right there, right through there. And you just tighten it down. And that's it, man. It's real simple. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is launch this kite. Here's the thing. You don't wanna just let this go, right? You could just let it go and it fly straight up, but that leaves a lot to chance. You got your antenna on here. That was a lot of work to build. If you remember back to trimming the darn thing. So now we are gonna control launch this thing from here. And this is what the guy in the kite shop told me to do. Pretty cool. All right, first things first, we gotta get the kite out and up. So very exciting part. Okay, here we are. I got the kite right here. Now, see this? I just got one of those little carabiners on the line. And now, we're just gonna walk this back. And by walking it back like this, this is the controlled launch I was talking about. We are gonna unclip it to go around the end of it halfway. We don't wanna put any additional stress on that, but um, we're not even to it yet. That thing, I don't know, I got about 80 feet of line out there, so I think I got about 100 feet right here. And here is my tie on. Now, perfect timing to look. I am actually on the latch on that, and I don't want to be on the latch, so I'm going to fix it. In a normal scenario, I just would have unclipped and reclipped, and we would have been done. But here we are, walking a line back. You can see my antenna line right there. And it's going to be adjusted by gravity in a second. Here we are back to the end fed. Get the counterpoise out. There we go. All right. Hold on. It's hard to do this with a camera. So just hang rope. Work with me here. I just clipped on the other side. That's all. And now I just let the carabiner fall right down to the stake right there. And as you can see, we now have an antenna kite. So the next thing I do is I kind of pull a little tension on the uh, feed line here, bring it down here, put a couple wraps around the stake. And that just keeps the antenna tight so it's not getting blown by the wind. When If you just let it slack, it'll kind of do this number. If you pull on it, it kind of goes up and falls a string. Just makes a better antenna, I think. All right, so we're back here at the table right here so let's get out what we're going to use here and then talk about a few more things that are really important today we're using the venerable ft818 as usual it's my favorite radio and I brought this bad boy. It's my uh, four and a half amp hour battery. That should be more than enough to power this thing for a long time.
Boom. What are we gonna use for a paddle today? What? This is my new favorite paddle, only because of the history. Um, these were made until the 80s, actually. Um, it's referred to as the J45. The only reason I know this is a newer version, it has this nomenclature on it, which is tells me that it's a newer one. There used to be uh, stamped J45, and the J45, and this is the uh, J37 Morse code key. And this won the war, man. World War II was won with this key right here. Okay. This has a knee clamp on it, or a leg clamp, so I just mount it to my leg and uh, makes it super easy to do Morse code. If you're a straight key kind of guy. Okay, what's next? All right, this is important. Before you go and hook up your feed line to your kite antenna, I would like you to think back to somebody called Benjamin Franklin. He ran this experiment where he got a spark to come off a key. Now granted, it was in kind of a, a wet day and a rainstorm, blah, blah, blah. However, uh, what we have here is a wire going into the sky without any termination, and it's building up static electricity. And it's important to be aware of the static electricity, not only what it could do to you, but what it could do to your radio. You don't want that, especially when you have a radio that doesn't get made anymore. I just clipped it to the stake. Stake is grounded, stuck into fairly, fairly wet sand here at the beach. And I think that's going to provide enough ground for what I'm trying to do today, i.e. prevent any damage to my radio. I just clip it to the body of the radio. Not a big deal. Okay, next. Okay, so we've activated. The next thing we need to do, and I didn't want to leave you hanging on this because it's important, is bringing the kite back down. And I'm just gonna show you right from here how I do it. I'm not gonna show you how I put it, the kite away and all that stuff because it's gonna be different for every kite, but I am gonna show you how I bring the kite down in a very controlled fashion. So I still have my carabiner, it was right down at the stake, right? Now I'm just gonna walk this thing out until the kite comes down. And that's it. I just use the carabiner, bring the kite down, and then, so I don't lose the carabiner, I clip it onto the kite handles, and that's it, man. So I hope you guys enjoy uh, your opportunity to do a, a kite activation, because it's so much fun, and you do, these kite antennas have legs, man. So just like Marconi got across the uh, Atlantic, I got across the Atlantic today too. So I'll see you guys next time. This is K1NGZ. I'll catch you guys on the air.